It's October 2017, and time again for an Inherit the Earth Sand and Shadows Developers Report. I'm Joe Pierce, owner of the Wormkeep Entertainment Company. In this video, there will be a rundown on the latest art production, plus a summary of my trip to this year's Comic-Con. Last report, I said that Ed Lockabon was about to start drawing the background for a scene based on the elk training grounds that appeared in the webcomic. Here is his rough draft of that background. This area is accessible from the completed scene known as the Elk Guard Post. Two characters have had their animations completed. The first is the new character that I gave a preview of in the previous report. Hi, I'm Lisa. Do you want to hear a juicy rumor? Uh, not right now, Lisa. Lisa is animated by Julie Butler, aka Falconese, who has returned to the project after a long hiatus. Ryan Paxton has provided me the final frames for Laura. Let's check in on her. I have great confidence that the orb will be recovered. I'm sure Riff appreciates that, Alara. Next, Ryan will be working on one of the hares that act as a servant at the Sanctuary of the Orb. A few months ago, I attended Comic-Con in San Diego, California. One of the themes of that con was the celebration of the late Jack Kirby's 100th birthday. Kirby is responsible for creating, by himself or with collaborators, many of the iconic superheroes that populate comics, film, and television including Captain America, Thor, the Fantastic Four, and the X-Men. He is also behind the villains Steppenwolf and Darkseid that are the antagonists of the upcoming Justice League film. And now a pictorial of highlights from the con as I travel from Hall G to Hall A and beyond. We start in the Artist's Alley, where some artists are taking their steampunk productions really seriously. The Funko booth sports a very large Hulk, as he appears in Thor Ragnarok. And here we have a normal sized Funko Supergirl and Arrow. In this cabinet, there are a collection of dolls and sculptures, including Disney princesses, DC superheroines and femme fatales, male DC Universe characters, and My Little Pony characters. The Bob's Burgers booth was designed to look like the eatery from the cartoon series, even including a fry chef in the back. Have a day, like. Here's a reproduction of a small section of the Star Trek The Next Generation bridge set. Disney continues their production of picture disc vinyl records, this time with Star Wars The Force Awakens soundtrack. I believe these are actual costumes used in the films that are going to be auctioned off soon. Square Enix has escaped from the video game area, which we will get to near the end of this report, to appear in the anime company section of the show floor. This Sauron costume from Lord of the Rings was displayed in the Weta workshop booth. I'm pretty sure this is not the best way to clear out the crowds in front of you. Prepare for Pony, starting with a sculpture of Songbird Serenade from the MLP movie. That's all from the Hasbro booth. Time for a lunch break and a chance to explore the expanded universe of Comic-Con throughout the gas lamp district of San Diego. Huge advertisements for upcoming TV shows are painted on the walls of some buildings. The animation house Laika took over a restaurant. The parking lot for Petco Park was once again in use by many companies. Exhibits even crop up in the medium along the trolley line. On the way back from lunch, I saw that a storefront had been taken over by the new entry in the Star Trek franchise, Discovery. Inside, they were displaying costumes and props from the show. Being a longtime trekker, 
I took many pictures. seems like a good time to remind everyone that these developer reports are supported by Inherit the Earth patrons on Patreon. Please consider becoming a patron yourself. Now back to the con floor. Here we have a kid-sized Star Wars land speeder. More DC superheroines and villains in a nice diorama. I'm not sure this is the best thing or the worst for a morning commute. I think that one piece on the costume of this Lego Flash is a little too prominent. In the back of the marble booth, there was a demonstration of the game Powers United VR. Four players competed while wearing VR goggles. And there was a screen set up that could show you all four players' views. Let's stop a moment for some more cosplayers. I didn't expect to see a NASA Jet Propulsion Lab booth, but there it is. Now where has that giant teleporting space dog gotten to? Let's just overlook that last picture and instead take a look at the costumes from the upcoming Justice League film at the DC Comics booth. Wait, she's not from that film. Now that's truly disturbing. What me worry doesn't quite cut it. Moving on to the sideshow booth, we have Toothless from How to Train Your Dragon. And Vamprilla from, well, Vamprilla. K2SO from Rogue One. It takes all kinds here at Comic-Con. I would call this cosplay deep fried. One of the many fan booths in the area just upstairs of the back of the hall. A quick plug for my friend Dustin Adair's games, which you can download at www.scaryrobot.com which finally brings us to Hall A and video games. Here's an old school Wonder Woman. I assure you that Iron Man is not trying to repulsor blast Wonder Woman here probably wouldn't work anyway. You know, magical bracelets? Or just magic in general. And we end with one final gathering of cosplayers. Time to beam up and end this report. Live long and prosper.